Amen. Okay, we're honored to have Rabbi Dr. Anatan Ben, who is doing his PhD, or complete, completed his yeah. PhD at Hebrew University, um, focusing on Hebrew grammar with a particular attention to be not even Janach, and he's working very hard to have his works republished and really in order to educate everyone on such an important topic. And it's an honor to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so first, let me uh, apologize once again for my English, which is not perfect. Um, I'll try as hard as I can. I'm used to, to speak and to think in Hebrew, so I might get stuck here and there. So hopefully you'll uh, help me with that. Um, um, the, the doors. Uh, oh. So, um, I want to speak a little bit about the um, what, is that, what I call here the history of Hebrew root conception and its implications. Um, okay, I'll, um, throughout I'm going to 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 understand how uh, uh, all speak Hebrew, right? Mm -hmm. I mean the terms. Well, but but uh, the lecture will be in English, right? Preferable. I'll do it in English. I'll do it in English, and and I don't care. I don't mind. I really don't. I'll do it in English, okay? And the terms that I'm going to use in Hebrew. Um, so so I'm going to have two, or maybe three, uh, three major uh, stops in the the history of of the the conception of how grammarians um, uh, thought about the Hebrew roots, and we'll see the the uh, the, development. the development of it, and maybe maybe uh, at the end I'll say like a sentence about how we take it today. So the first uh, the first stop will be um, at one of the. Uh, Uh, one one of the well-known uh, grammarians named Menachem ben Saruk. Uh, most of us know him through Rashi's commentary, which he uh, uh, he refers to uh, many many times. Um, I'm not sure how many have read. Sorry. Yesterday, Rashi in the Gemara Tafyomi referred to Menachem ben Afen and uh, Dunash probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He has he has a lot of it. And later on, I'll say a word about uh, about that, about Rashi and Menachem. So, so Menachem was actually um, um, he was one of the first grammarians, uh, the Hebrew grammarians. He lived in Spain, um, and he um, he was uh, uh, like the uh, like the personal poet and writer of Chizda Ibn Shapirut. Um, also, Dunash was in the same uh, position, so they were rivals. And and Menachem was the first to write uh, thorough Hebrew, uh, thorough uh, Hebrew dictionary in Hebrew. Okay, before him there were several dictionaries written, but in Arabic and not that thorough. Rav Sadigon wrote one, and Rav Haigon wrote one, but he was the first to write um, a complete. Um, Hebrew Roots Dictionary, and he wrote in, in Hebrew, which was not at all uh, to be taken um, um, for granted, thank you, uh, because it, they didn't speak Hebrew then. So it's really, um, and Hebrew there are actually pretty difficult. It's not that simple. So, um, so he wrote this dictionary, and there are a lot of, of, of grammar issues embedded in it, except the, the actual dictionary. Um, so one of his uh, decision, decisions he had to make is, well, as, as you all know, like, um, as everyone who has ever written a dictionary has to know, uh, obviously, you have to take a, uh, uh, you have to decide how you're going to arrange the uh, Arachim. What's Arachim? Entries. The entries, thank you. 
Okay, so that's a very important decision to make before studying. So he wrote um, a dictionary of Hebrew roots. So he has to. Um, so so he wants to to order them according to the alphabet of the roots. But for that he has to to determine what is the root of each and every word, which is not that simple. So most of of the Hebrew roots um, are simple. Um, it's a well-known fact, and it was also uh, well-known for Menachem that that the main uh, the main course of Hebrew is to have uh, uh, tre, 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 three radical roots, like shamar and katav, etc. And that's pretty easy. But what happens with, uh, with verbs when suddenly in one of its uh, conjugations, one of the letters disappear? Okay? For example, if you have yeshav, so yeshav is like katav and shamar, that's okay, but in the future you have yeshev or eshev, so the Yud or the Aleph of Eshev, it's not part of the root, right? It's only for the uh, first person or thir third person. So where's the, the, the Yud of Yeshav? So it's gone, right? So there you have to decide what's the root of the verb Yeshav in order to put it in place. So Menachem, um, so uh, he, um, he decided, or he thought um, that the, the principle was that every letter that is stable in the whole of the verb conjugation, it's root. If, it, if it's not, if sometimes it disappears, it's not part of the root. Okay? So in Yeshav, the Yud naturally is not part of the root, and you'll find this verb in the entry Shin Bet, Shav. Okay? By the way, in Shin Bet, you will also find, for example, uh, lashuv to return, because the vav is also doesn't appear in all the pages. Shav, shav in the past tense is only shin bet, so there you will find this also, and you also find this find there in shin bet shava to to capture. Okay, for example, you have vayishb, um, uh, right? Vayishb menu shevi. So only shin bet is apparent, and. There are some more, some more. I think Shin Bet is like you have eight, uh, eight machlakot or something like that. So already you see some problematic in this uh, in this method, but but it worked for for him. So that that was the principle. Um, that principle led to uh, led Menachem to 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 have, as I said, a bi radical roots. Not so well, many of them, Shinbe, a lot of them, but also um, one single radical root. How's that? Because you have, for example, you take the uh, verb hika to hit. So hika, you have hey, kaf, and hey, but in the future tense, you have yake, so the first hey, of course, naturally is gone, yake, but you have like vayach, uh, vayach. You have also two, you have several, but Vayach is the most uh, clear example where all of the, the rest of the letters are gone. So Kaf is the root. You'll find uh, Hika, Vayach, all the conjugation under, the, under Kaf. Like that, you have in Zayn, Lehazot, to sprinkle, right? Because you have Vayez, or Vayez Nitzcho Me'alav, there are several of them. Um, actually, I think that almost uh, most of the, uh, the alphabet uh, letters you have an entry, like single uh, uh, letter root entry. So that that's basically how the uh, the dictionary is built. It's called well, it's uh, referred to as Machberet Menachem. That's not how he called it, but everyone knows this book as Machberet Menachem. And just technically, so as I said, you have the entries, which are the roots, and within every entry you have Machlakot. And every machlaka, that's a meaning, one meaning of this root. So if we go back to Shin Bet, you have uh, one class, one machlaka uh, to return, Lashuv, and he brings example uh, verses, for example, and Shava to capture, etc., etc. So that's how it works. Um, I'd like to take, um, uh, just show, show you examples of how one entry, how it works, and it took 
in purpose um, a bi-radical entry. So you see Samech uh, Resh. So it says like this, Mitchalek Lesheva Machlakot. If I see the need, I'm going to translate, but if I have to, just tell me. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Mitchalek Lesheva Machlakot. Machlaka Rishona, Ki Ad Sirim Sevuchim, Ki Chekol Asirim Tachat Asir, Lishon Ki Mesonim Hu. Okay, meaning uh, Kutsim. How do you say Kutsim? Meaning. Okay. Hi. Okay, so Sirim Svuchim meaning Kutsim again, and and the second one you have two. Ki chekol hasirim tachat asir. That's that's a, a, a pun actually. The second sir is is a pot, right? But the first one is the Kutsim uh, thing. Hamachlaka shnia sir nafuach. את הסירות ואת היעים, בסירות דוגה, שפות הסיר הגדולה, לשון דבדים הם. Um, pots, right? Yeah. Um, I've heard an interpretation that Sir Nafuach is actually from the first line. Which? That Sir Nafuach of Yirmiyahu is actually from the, uh, yeah. the plane. Great. So here you see, you have to, uh, you have to consider whether, in which machlaka to put it. That's right. That's, um, yeah. Yeah, you can dispute that naturally, um, but also it's interesting to to notice how he sometimes struggles because it's a Hebrew Hebrew dic dictionary, and and sometimes he has to struggle in order to define the meaning. So leshon devadim hema, like dude, right? Oh, sort yeah, sort of a pot. What can he say? That, that's oh, that's interesting thing to, to what? Because uh, normally you just say see it. Exactly, exactly. So you have to, to find a synonym all the way, right? Uh, I mean, translate it into English would have been much easier, right? Uh, so, so we have kotsim, um, we have a pot, pots. Hamachlaka shlishit, sar sov'am, sar umaher, hakol sar yachdav ne'elachu. I'm reading it fast, b'rishutchem. Hine damesek musar me'ir, isha yafa v'sar atam. Um, here you see he doesn't um, define, define it. I'm, 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 I'm sure. It could be from the uh, for the first machlaka. It might be not leshon. Uh, okay, what we're speaking about now. I'm just okay. I'm just going to finish. So that third machlaka. Actually, he doesn't define it, and it's like to to. Uh, well, the as he gives doesn't, re doesn't require definition. Okay, great, good. So how would you def define it? It's um to to take off, I yeah, I'd say. Or you know, or to right, yeah. yeah, or to remove what's oneself. Yeah, exactly. Okay, to, yeah, to remove saru maher saru maher mina right? They they have removed. They have they removed themselves. Themselves exactly. Um, so, so how he interprets uh, meaning he took me off uh, the way or something like that. But then he says it might be meaning he yeah he put thorns in my way, which is actually meaning kind of the same, but but um, in a different way. You say sarur, let's say. You wouldn't say that. You say what? Sarur. If you're gonna say it like that, it's sarur. No, sarur. It's a verb, right? Right. So you're gonna say sarur. He put thrown. He put. Right. So it is. The first definition is more would be better, right? Because it's a verb, sarur. But if he's gonna yitachen sarur megizrat sirim sevuchim. If it's sirim sevuchim, it would be a noun, right? So no, he, no, 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 no. He would say a verb. He a verb. put who he God, of uh, course. What? It's what either he there? took me out of the way or he put thor, uh, thorns. Thor? Thorns. Thorns. thorns in my way. Meaning, like as a mashal, kind of the same. Mm -hmm. But you see, the very fact that he can't. Um, um, Define exactly the the what later is going to be a tri uh, uh, 
a radical root that is sometimes is nodding between the, this and that. I'm going to speak about it in a minute. That's the Shlishit. The Machlaka Raviit, Umoserot Arod Mifiteach, Musar Melachim Piteach, Umoserotecha Anatek, Aisirem Keshem Al Adatam, Inyan Kesher Hema. A knot, right? Because you see, Moserot Arod Mifiteach. We're speaking about uh, opening, untying Moserot, so that means that Moserot is a tie. המחלקה החמישית, יסר בנך כי יש תקווה, יסור יסר ענייה, ויסרני מלכת בדרך העם הזה לאמור, הרוב עם שדה יסור, וכנניה הוא שר הלווים במסע יסור, במסע עניין תוכחת המה. That's clear, right? ליסר. המחלקה השישית, אסור ענה ואראה, וירא אדוני כי שר לראות, סורה אדוני, סורה אליי. אכן שר מר המוות ויסורו אליי ויסור שמה לאכול לחם ויסר אליה אוהלה. His definition is כמו ויט אליה. Meaning to, 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 to crook the way, right? So that's kind of a little bit similar to the... Yeah, it's a little bit similar to the third one, but nevertheless he separates them. Because it has slight different uh, meaning. והמחלקה השביעית כי כפרה שוררה שרר ישראל. כי דיבר שרה, הוי בנים סוררים, אך סוררים שחנות שכיחה, על דגן ותירוש יתגוררו, יסור וי, עניין מרדות המה. אוקיי? כן, הרבה פעמים אתה יכול לעשות את זה עם שתי אנשים, אבל... כן, הרבה פעמים אתה יכול לעשות את זה עם שתי אנשים. Well, he wrote the dictionary, so he gives us um, the way he sees it. And what is, uh, what you can notice that, um, as you said, it's a shadow of, it's, it's like, it's shades. shades, yeah. It's not very accurate, okay? You, you can notice that. What I mean, not very accurate, I mean that you have Samech Resh, you have seven Machlakot here, which almost every one of them, like a whole different uh, meaning, okay? Like you almost have no, no connection between the meanings, right? Okay. So that's, that's Menachem, that's how his dictionary is, uh, is uh, built. And, and it was at his time a very, very important work he's done. But um, it didn't last long, except in, in, in France, in uh, Rashi, but I'll talk about this um, in a minute. It didn't last long because only one generation after him, one of his students named um, Yehuda ben David, uh, which is almost for sure uh, the one who we know as Yehuda ben David, named Chayuj, he was his student. And he, um, he disputed him totally, okay, completely. Um, he said, okay, for, his claim was that Hebrew roots, I mean, the, the Hebrew ver, the roots of the verbs, you, you don't find, by definition, there isn't um, less than three radical roots, okay? That's the, the least, as opposed to Menachem, who had two and first, and, 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 uh, and single one. And um, what he has to do, what he, ha what, uh, he had to show where, I mean, like I said, Menachem also knew that the main uh, course of the Hebrews uh, a three uh, letters root, but he said that's universal in the, in the Hebrew. But he had to show where does all the, this, these weak uh, letters go, right? I mean, we see it's gone in many, many cases. So um, I'm not going to get into this, but what he did, he, that's, um, he, um, he wrote his own dictionary, but his dictionary was only, it's not, it wasn't a thorough one because he relied on Menachem. He just disputed him with, um, on all, uh, all the verbs of the, of the which has weak uh, letters. So what he did, he showed actually uh, where do all the, the weak uh, letters go. And he has this very, very sophisticated theory, 
which um, in a way um, lasts till this very day. I mean, we hold in his teachings, in Hayuji's teachings. So what he had to do, to do is to, to take all of the um, single uh, radical roots of Menachem and all the um, two, two letters root and show how it's actually uh, three letters roots. Okay, so what he, um, and he actually in this book, he actually built the, the, the structure of all the, the, the conjugation system of the weak verbs, which as I said, maintain um, still today. So he find out that there are basically three uh, groups of verbs. One with the first radical, uh, we, we, the first radical is weak. The second is the second radical weak, and the third radical weak, which we call um, pe yud or pe aleph. The pe apoal is yud or aleph, and we have ein vav. The ein apoal is vav, and lamed he. The lamed apoal is he. Everybody is familiar with pe apoal, ein apoal, lamed apoal. If not, I will explain. Okay. Um, so, and his theory was. Um, uh, it, it said that there are four weak letters. A heavy, a, a aleph, he, vav, yud. Vav, nun, in, in nafa, for example. Pe okay, so pe according to Chayuj, nun is not a weak letter. Right, but what, what does he do with it in terms, he just says... So when, when, you, when you see yipol, that's, that's sh like shlemim for him. The, the nun just assimilated the pe, but it's mm -hmm. there. You see it because you have a dagesh there. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. But in Yeshev, uh -huh. you don't see a yud at when all. In other words, when there's a compensating factor of a dagesh, then, then it's, not an, a, it's not a weak letter. In there's no compensation factor. Not exactly, because also these, these weak verbs can um, assimilate and have as a compensation at the gish. So it goes also to that, but he had to, to show whether it's when a nun you, or a yud. When they assimilate, when do you have a compensation of a dagesh? No, a well, he, when it assimilates, you don't call it an assimilation. It just assimilates Sometimes and... Sometimes they change. Right. Yeah, For example, he says that the root of hitziv, hitziv has a dagesh in the tzadi, that's yud tzadi bet. What does he say? Nun tzadi bet. Yud. Yod. Yod tzadi bet. Okay. So yod, the weak verbs. Okay, so it's a complete theory, um, and he describes what, uh, how do the uh, those four weak letters behave? So they can assimilate, they can interchange between between one another, they can uh, be omitted sometimes. But he defined everything that happens with those four letters, and nun is not one of them. Nun just assimilates. Mm -hmm. So ipol is a strong verb. It's a try. Is, is a simple tri uh, uh, radical root for, for Hayuj and for Ibn Janai Hashem also. Um, you're right that for some uh, grammarians it's not. It's also uh, considered to be a weak uh, letter, not in Hayuj's uh, theory. So, so what he did, he showed how all the conjugation works with those four uh, letters. And so he built his own dictionary only um, of the weak verbs. So it has uh, three chapters. The first one is all the verbs with the first radical weak, either yud or aleph. The second is the second radical, and the third, third radical. And he has this second book, which is uh, the continu continuation, uh, he called the uh, kfulim. Okay, sometimes there are verbs that the second and the third radical are identical. So that's like a different set of, of rules he had there. So that's the book he wrote, and and his book spread out immediately, and immediately um, Menachem's theory was actually abandoned, but it was abandoned only uh, in the places where they could read Chayyud's work, which was written in Arabic. Mm -hmm. Most of them, most of the uh, of the Jews, as you probably know, that um, lived in. Uh, in the Muslim era, uh, spoke, um, wrote in Judeo-Arabic. So, excluding Menachem and Dunash and, and their students. They're, it's like a small island of, of writing Hebrew, very difficult Hebrew. Um, so, so, what I'm saying is that, as I mentioned at the beginning, Rashi, for example, he didn't know Chayuj's words, even though he was 
after him. Okay, it's really a question. It's an interesting question. What Rashi's commentary would, would seem like, would look like, if he had known Chayuj's and Ibn Janakh's words, which preceded him. So he he had only Menachem, and that's what he mentions because they, they didn't uh, read Arabic there, and it wasn't uh, yet translated um, uh, there in these places. So. Um, but there were also not many Mahbir uh, Menachems even available, from what I remember. Oh, there were many. There were many. There were many. There are... When Lusato republished it, he writes in his introduction that there was only half a dozen, six. He didn't know them. Uh -huh. There is. Uh -huh. um, I just finished not long ago editing a new publication of this of the Mahberet, mm -hmm. and they have tens, or dozens of uh, manuscripts. of manuscripts. Mm -hmm. So it was it was very very uh, widespread. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also Chayud. Shavim, the same the manuscripts is no. No, no, they're they're better and and, uh -huh. and worse like always, um, but there there were many many of them. Um, generally, uh, dictionaries were very uh, common. They had a lot of them. If you, uh, okay, never. I'm not going to get into this. So, so I, um, um, I'm going to. Um, I took. So what Chayuj um, practically did, um, if I if I imagine him sitting with the Machberet Menachem and try to rearrange the necessary uh, entries, what he did was take all the, um, um, for, um, for what we need is the uh, bi-radical roots, and put them, uh, separate them according to the new conjugation he, he actually discovered. As you probably saw, uh, Menachem didn't distinguish between if it was Binyan Kar or Binyan Piel or whatever, or if it's a noun or a verb, or just just if it clings, some you 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 have some echresh and it fits the meaning, so it's there. Chayuj distinguished it. So, but, then, but he essentially may distinguish between them and his machlakot, right? If he has a different machlakot, it may be a different binyan, you know. Okay, so, so you 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 speaking about Chayuj? Uh, I'm saying that no, I'm saying that Saruk's definitions according to the machlakot, yeah. right? Machlakot, whatever you want to say that essentially a lot of them are based on Binyani too. No. No? no. Not at all? No. The first one to use the, 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 the division of Binyanim was Chayuj. He no, no, was the I first... Know, I know. He didn't intend... I'm saying that... But he, but he, he defined intend. what's Kal and what's no, no, Kavet. No, he didn't. But he... In other words, what I'm saying is that essentially Menachem ibn Saruk's uh, definitions of Mahlakot are sometimes according to the Binyanim, or most times according to the Binyanim. He didn't just say, this is Binyan Kad, this is Kabed, not Kabed. Right, whatever. but that but should just... be a coincidence because sometimes you have mm. a certain meaning occurring only in certain Binyan. So that's what you have. Right, right. But not necessarily. For mm. example, if you have Kufresh Bet, so the regular one uh, to, to, to become close is Karav in, in Binyan Kal. But you have Ufar O Hikriv, right? Which is the same meaning as Binyan Kal. So um, Menachem would. Well, he Korban is also. Thing yeah, but right? but it, you're right. That's essentially, the you're same right, way. but you have a, w at least one occurrence which Binyan Hifil, in the it's in the meaning of to become to close, closer. not to sacrifice naturally. Right, right. Chazal were aware of that and and they they felt it. So we say, who did he? Uh, 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 it mihu he kriv he kriv at Israel aviem she b'shemayim, but not, that's not the pshat. The pshat is he became close naturally. So Menachem would put karav in binyan kal and he kriv in the same machlaka. He doesn't distinguish them. Chayuj would also put them in the same machlaka, the same meaning, but he will say this is kal and this is ifil in the same meaning. Mm -hmm. That's that's what he does. So um, Chayuj's dictionary is also um, uh, divided into machlakot and. Well, it's not Mechlako because he wrote in Arabic, um, but um, he divides also into meanings. But the Chidush of him, one of the Chidushim, is that within each Mechlaka, it's divided um, into the Binyanim. Okay, you have Binyan Kal, and, and Piel, and Yifil, etc. And the passive, he, and Nifal. Okay, so he was the first to use, actually, the, what we call today Binyanim. So I'm going, so I took... 
So, um, so if he takes this Samech Resh um, entry of uh, Menachem, if Chayyim took it, um, he would have um, taken some of it to Shoresh Yud Sam. For example, the 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 fifth Machlaka Yaser Bin Chaki Eshtikva. That's for Chayyim Yud Samech Resh. Okay, but the third one Sar Sovam. That's Samech Vav Resh. So he'll split this uh, Menachem's entry into at least three or even four different roots. Can be Yud Samech Resh, could be Samech Vav Resh, could be Samech Resh He, and could be Samech Resh Resh. You have all four of them. So for for this uh, for this um, talk, I just took um, the entry Samech Vav Resh of Chayuj, okay, and we'll see what he did with that. And I I pointed in in Menachem's. Um, um, the, the machlakot that we would expect to be Samech Vav Resh. So it's the first, the second, the third, and the sixth. Okay, we would accept, expect it to be a second weak radical. Okay, Sir, it's Samech Yud Resh. So Yud and Vav actually the same to Chayud, it interchanges. And also Sir meaning pot, and Sar is Samech Vav Resh, and the sixth, Asura. Okay, and we'll see what he did with that. Can I ask you a question yeah, sure. about why are they saying that they necessarily, that the noun of seer, for example, is a noun, is an exact from the po'al of sar or sur? Who said why? that? No, I'm just saying that that's a, the way it appears. He's saying Where? sar, sirim. Menachem? Su, yeah, menachem. So, why is he saying that the noun is necessarily an exad? Please show me where exactly you no, mean. No, 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 no. So he's which, saying, in which machlaka? No, no, no. His first machlaka is seed is a noun, right? And right. Seed is right. Right, a noun. So here you have only a noun. Only a noun. No. So uh, yeah, yeah, Hayyuj, for him. How does Hayuj, so my question is, how does Hayuj deal with that noun? What's the shortage of that noun? So I'll, I'll, I'll refer to that in a minute, okay? okay. So I'm reading uh, from Hayuj, uh, entries Samech Vavresh. So he begins like this. They, uh, so that's my translation into Hebrew. Okay, from from now on, Chayuj and Ibn Janach, it's my translation. Not much translate here, but anyway. So Sar me'ala oel v'sartem min haderech asur yesur. He just demonstrates the conjugation asur yesur lemiyom sur Ephraim v'surai ba'aretz yikatevu surai hagefen nochria gola v'sura. So that matches which machlaka of, of Menachem, do you think? Three, three, three and third? six. Either the third, the third and the sixth. Yeah, yeah. The so the third and sixth are, are either one of them, right? right. Um, and he has several uh, similar uh, verses he took, okay? So we're just going to see this in a minute. So until now it was kal, what we call binyan kal. And now, you see the kaved, within the same meaning. Kaved, here it's hif'il. Hesir, hasiroti, vehesir Hashem. Yasir, vatasar bigdal menuta, mesir mirushalayim, haser mimcha ikeshut pe. So the first one meaning he took himself out or, or, or off or something. And the second in hif'il, to took someone else out. Okay, but the, the, the basic meaning is the same. And then he continues. V'yesh b'shoresh hora'a nosefet kruva l'rishona. So you see, Menachem took it as two different machlakot, not saying anything, but he's saying it's related to the first one. V'yar Adonai kisar l'rot. Asur anav ere, yasur shama l'echol lachem, v'yasar eleha ha'ohela, sura Adonai sura elai. You see many similar verbs. That's the sixth machlaka, which is to crook the way, and he says explicitly, it's close to the first one, okay? So, we see here the division between Kal and Kaved, and we see two, uh, two of the Machlakot of, of Menachem. We haven't seen the first and the second, right? Well, the, I mean, he, he says second of Ka'alim, right? So is, is Ibn Janah, I'm sorry, Kayod rather, is he only dealing with verbs? Okay, thank you. So verbs. you already answered uh, half of the, but okay, we'll get into this uh, later. Um, so that's what Chayuj did. Um, what he did was pretty uh, amazing um, to, to, to discover this, his discovery. And all the, all the grammarians refer to him as the Avi Hadikduk or um, 
Ibn Ezra called him Rosh um, Dekdekim because even Ibn Ezra has even a Mishpat Piyuti. He says that all of the grammarians in Yeshnu Shnat Ha'ivelet they they had slept and the the Kadosh uh, I don't remember the exact word but it says. He was the first to wake up. Ah, okay, everybody was blind, was blind and sleep like blind, and he was the first to discover um, um, the real science of, of, of the roots. And yeah, but Menachem was essentially the first. No, was the or the Haigaon, or somebody was before. Yeah, the they were he just developed the concept of. The, of yeah. But they were, as, as Ibn Ezra said, Megashishim mm Bachoshech. -hmm. They didn't quite, could, they couldn't distinguish between, between the different meanings and the different conjugations. And, and, and it, it has affection on, on the Peshat. Because, so now let's say if we were um, encountering a word in the Bible which has Samech and Resh, it has some other um, uh, letters, but you know. It could be Shoshi, it could not. I don't, we don't know nothing about the other letters. We have Samech and Resh. So now we want to check what's the meaning. So we're opening in Menachem's Machberet uh, in Samech Resh, and we need to check all, all the list of, of, uh, of Machlakot and to decide. I mean, he didn't bring all the Samech Resh in, in the Bible, of course. He just brought examples. So if we're encountering some, something that doesn't appear here, so we need to decide what is the most suitable, okay? So it can be either, sometimes it can be either seven of them. It's not that accurate. What Chayuj have done is now much more accurate because if I see some other letters, I know from the rules that Chayuj put um, what the three letters radical are. Okay, so it reduces my, uh, my possibilities to, to, um, to decide which meaning it is, okay? Instead of searching within four, uh, seven machlakot, uh, I have only two or three. So that brings us much closer to the pshat, and that's what he meant to do, actually. So what Chayuj da did was actually amazing, and he did it only by, um, by yun, yun and, and, the, uh, and observing uh, those letters, and and analogy, hekesh. Analogy was a very... Um, in Hayush's third comment, V'yesh l'ashor l'shor ha'an osevet cheruva l'rishona l'yar Hashem ki sar l'ra'ot How is that different than sar me'al ha'ohel? How is he... What is the difference? Because sar is to take off, and right. l'asur is to crook your way. So it is sar me'al ha'ohel, too. It's not to crook... It doesn't have... It's yeah. like coming versus yeah. going. One is removing yourself. One is to remove one one is is to right. So removing oneself would be the first place. The second one is you have a way you're going to, but you take off from it. And you don't have a way, it just goes away. Ah. Uh, from from, from, from no. the position. Yeah, from the position he is. That but you see, you're you noticing he says it's close, pretty close, but distinguished. Um, I was about to say something, um, but we, we have like, we don't have much time, right? Like 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. What? Don't worry. Okay. The test is over at 8.45. <laughs> no, going. please tell me. Going. I think we're good. Okay, so what I want okay. to say that, that, um, that Chayuj has discovered a major thing, and what's really amazing that um, only with his iyun and analogy he did to what the main method he did was to compare the, the weak uh, verbs to the strong verbs. So, um, yeshav means to be like shamar. And if yeshev, it's not like yishmor, you should, you should, um, uh, you should compare them and to see what happened to the, to the lost radical. That's the analogy he used. And that analogy brought him to major discoveries, um, with some of them which um, were rediscovered only in the past generations with you know new tools new um, uh, new tools they, they, they found like um, from archaeology and other uh, sources so I'm just going to give you one very interesting example for that so uh, Chayuj looked at the verb halach to go 
And where would you find this um, in Menachem's dictionary? Lamed Chaf. Why? Why is that? Yeah, Vayelech. The hay disappeared, right? So according to Menachem, hay is not part of the root. That's that's clear. But but Chayuj thought differently. Halach um, is like Shamar, right? But you do have Yahaloch or Vati Halach Esh Arza. You do have that, and that goes like the Shlemim, like Shamar and Ishmor. But the main, but you usually see halach and yelech, right? So the hay disappears. So we would expect him to, okay, so, so what's the, the root of, of this verb according to chayuj? So on the one hand, you have hay, right? In halach. On the other hand, yelech behaves like, like what? Like yeshev, right? Like yeled, which are um, a first radical yud. Okay, so it's kind of weird because either you have yeshav yeshev, yalad yeled, or you have halach yahaloch. I mean, the hay doesn't uh, usually disappear like that. The yud does, the vav does, but the hay doesn't. Okay, so he said like this: I have a problem. I have two different con uh, one conjugation for the past tense and one for the future tense, and it doesn't fit. So he said there are probably um, originally two separate roots. There were two separate roots that meant the same or something very, very close to each other. One was halach, hey lamed chaf, and one was yalach, yud lamed, yod lamed kaf. Okay? The halach, the hey, you see it in the past tense, halach, yahalach, wherever there is a hey, that's for sure the radical. And the yalach root, you see it especially in the future tense because yalach, acts like Yeshev and Yeled, the first radical Yud, okay? And how, and, and he said there were two separate roots which emerged into uh, um, to one conjugation, but some of them in the past tense, some of the future tense. And he says it might be different um, accents, different uh, dialects, dialects of, of the Hebrews, because the Hebrews spread all, all over Israel. That's um, um, it's pretty, obvious that they had different accents. And he says this many times, probably were different dialects that emerged, okay? But the hey, you see the hey. The yud, you don't see it. He only um, um, got into it by analogy, because you don't, you, you don't have a verb yalach in Hebrew, right? Or, or you don't see the yud, you just see that it acts like a yud. Okay, so that what he, well, that's what he said. Um, Later on, like, I don't remember, like two, two or three hundred years ago, there was a, a Protestant uh, scholar um, who was named was Pretorius, that he claimed that, no, the original verb is only halach, and he describes very uh, in detail how, how the, uh, um, the development was until it got to something that's similar to, to yelech, Okay, etc. So he didn't agree with Chayuj. He said this, uh, it's not reasonable, he said, only halach. Almost a hundred years ago, in the late 20s of the, uh, of the 20th century, um, probably heard of it, they discovered um, in a place that's called today Ras Shamra in Syria, they discovered Ugarit, right? The city, ancient city, Ugarit. Um, and among others, they have many, many texts there, and took several years until, until they decipher it. And the Ugaritic is a very interesting um, language. It's a Semitic language, very, 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 very close. It's, it's a Canaanite uh, dialect, very close to Hebrew. So they discovered many things they couldn't have known before. Many, many Pshat had discovered um, thanks to the to Ugaritic. It's really interesting. But what's interesting that in Ugaritic, the, the regular verb to walk is yalach, yud lamed kaf. So you see, so if Chayuj had indirect um, uh, proof to that, now they discovered like a direct, direct proof in the Canaanite um, uh, dialect, which you see, yud lamed kaf. So what Chayuj said, only from observing, he was right, he was right. 
the, probably the word to dialect that emerges. And you see this, um, this structure also in other places. So that's one interesting thing he, he had discovered. So um, let me finish now with uh, Rabiona Ibn Janach. So um, that was Hayuj, and Hayuj, um, he was a Vedic duke, he discovered um, all that. But um, what he wrote was, um, compared to all Hebrew grammar, it's pretty narrow. He, he dealt only, um, almost with this one subject. Hebrew grammar is much broader, there's a lot more to it, but he, that's what he did. After him, one generation after him, Rabbi Yona Ibn Janakh, his Arabic name was Marwan Abul Walid Ibn Janakh. Um, he didn't know him, but he studied his, uh, his books very, very, very thoroughly. And he took all of his teachings, Hayuj's teachings, and first of all, his, his uh, first books, he, um, yeah, he completed them. He, um, like, he found, you know, he, um, he found gaps and kind of details he missed or didn't do quite Compliment, right. Complimented. Complimented, thank you. Complimented the books. And later on, he, he wrote his magnum opus, his uh, uh, big book, uh, his major books, Sefer Rikma and Sefer Shorashim, which are, Sefer Rikma is a grammar book, thorough grammar book, which deals with all the aspects of Hebrew grammar based what's relevant upon uh, Hayuj's teachings. And the second one, Sefer HaShorashim, is actually the first um, complete dictionary written in Arabic, but according to Hayuj's method. So he took all of what was before him, and that's basically, until today, um, the most important medieval um, dictionary we have. Why was Radak Sefer HaShorashim Mikabel Yotel Mimenu? You're asking why? Yeah. Can I ask you please to ask this? In, 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 I want to refer to that. It's really important for me. At the end, I'll, I'll take that, okay? It's, yeah, it's, it's an important question, actually. And I have two answers. Um, unfortunately, I'll add. Um, so, so here, uh, in, the, the, uh, in the first work of Ibn Janakh, what he did, it's called Sefer HaHasaga which is a medieval name, more appropriate name in Hebrew would be Sefer HaShlama. He completed uh, and, uh, um, all, what Hayuj did. And he goes like Lefia Seder of Hayuj and complement everything needed to be complemented. So I took, again, Samech Vav Resh from this book. And what he's doing, he's reading Hayuj's book and say, okay, this is missing, this is wrong. This should be fixed, and that's what he's doing. It's it's a fascinating book, actually, um, because uh, okay, never mind now. So he says like this: "Su, it's it's down down the, the page." Na'elma mimenu b'shorish ze hora'achat. So Chayyud missed one meaning. Okay, so we saw that, right? Chayyud took the third and the sixth machlokot uh, of of Menachem, but he's saying he's missing one. Vehi derachai sorer. So that's which of, of Menachem's? Machlaka? That's one. the first, yeah. The first Machlaka of Menachem, meaning uh, thorn, kutsim, kutsim. So, um, and then he says, Sorer, yeah, in the verse, Derachai Sorer, he says it's a verb. Nigzar min Sirim. Sirim is the initial, it's a noun. That's the uh, quotes. And the verb sorer nigzar mize, it comes from that. It's actually what you call a um, uh, denominative verb. It's a verb coming uh, from a noun. So sorer nigzar min sirim, vehu poal avar kful halamed. Okay, so it's samech vav resh, but the lamed, a poal, which is resh, is doubled. So that's how you get sorer. Al mishkal ka'asher konen lehashchit. Because konen is also from kaf vav nun, but it's doubled. And he says, Zeu He's aware that there, you can explain otherwise exactly what Menachem did, right? Menachem has two different, and he's, he's not referring to Menachem explicitly, but it's obvious that he's referring to him. So uh, that's uh, what he's saying. And another thing, And the first one, he didn't mention, 
So a certain conjugation, uh, the passive one, Husar Atamid and Musar Meir, because he went, he went after Chayud's method, who, who brought all the conjugations uh, categories. So he, he missed one. Okay, so now there is one machlaka that is still missing, right? That's the second one of meaning pot, right? So why is that? So you said before, first of all, um, um, they didn't mean to deal with nouns especially, only if it has verbs connected to it. So sir, you only have noun there. But, an, but another answer is that, um, and I know that because I looked at Sefer HaShuashim that he wrote later on, and, and the meaning of sir, of pot, he puts in entry Samech Yudresh. And this is Samech Vavresh. So eventually he has everything, okay? He fills everything, all the gaps he filled here. So what other word is there with the Samech Yudresh? Shurish, other than seer. Where is the seer? Uh, what's the question again? What is another word? Uh, uh, a poan with seer. No, some, some, some doesn't exist. Yeah, some of the some of the uh, roots have. They may have existed, but we don't know them. Yeah, yeah, that that could be. Or if it's only a noun, so it only might you, you don't use like a, a verb, a dominant denominative verb. Could be either way. Okay, so um, um, so that's. That's what Ibn Janakh did. So now to, just to conclude, we're talking about the conception of, of the Hebrew root. So um, we see that Menachem, I'm just repeating that, Menachem saw um, the root, um, um, only the, the, the stable letters in the verb or in the noun, okay? That I would call a pragmatic, um, uh, shita theory, pragmatic, because he needed that in order to, like I said, to to arrange his his dictionary. But I, I'm not sure whether he actually thought that if you have seven machlakot in Samech Resh, or even more, you have I think like eleven or twelve in Chet Lamed, for example. I'm not sure if he actually thought that if you had eleven different meanings, that means that 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 initially it's the same root. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird, okay, to have a single root with many, many, many meanings. So that's, I, I think, he, did, he was only practical, okay? okay more user-friendly, so that the user is, is reading a pasuk that has a, a well, yeah. with the letter missing, he won't have to figure out what the missing letter is and look it up there. Well, yeah, but, but the saying user-friendly user right. is assuming you can do the other way. But he didn't discover the other way. He he was practical. Um, he didn't get into deeper theory like Hayuj did. He wanted to, to write a dictionary. He had to decide how to do it. So that's what he did. Okay. You were saying? No, I, I, I just lost my trend. Of yeah. I was listening. Oh, okay. so, so that was uh, Menachem. Hayuj, he was more um, technical. Because you see the conjugation, there are rules. Shin bet hey doesn't uh, conjugate like shin vav bet. Okay, you have shav, shavti, shavta, yeshuv, and on the contrary, you have shava, shaviti. He speaks about it in in, in his uh, uh, introductions. So that was more technical, but but technical, as I said, it helps you to 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 get to the pshat more easily, more quickly, and more accurately. Um, so that's two different thoughts altogether of, of how you, you take the root. Just another sentence about um, what happens today in, in the modern linguistics. That's quite interesting because um, I'm, I'm saying it pretty, uh, pretty shallow now, okay? I'm not getting into to the deep uh, water of it, but what happens that in a way, in a way, um, they, it's returning now to what Menachem actually said. So they're thinking that there were actually at the beginning many uh, bilateral, bilateral uh, roots, and and they became triliteral. So it's kind of combining. They became. They know there is Shava and Shavit. So it became triliteral um, in order to. Um, to, to complete the, the structure into triliteral because 
as Menachem already knew, tri-literal is the, the main course of Hebrew. So speakers, they have like a small uh, root and like naturally they want to expand it in order it to be similar to most of, of, of the words we, we use. So, so that's, that's, that's a point that's kind of interesting because in a way it goes back to Menachem, but it still uh, keeps the, the structural idea of, of Chayuj. That's what it goes today. Um, that's basically what I wanted to show you. There are, of course, plenty there more. There are cases, though, where the root of Menachem and the root is totally different in meaning also than Hayush. Right? For example, uh, is uh, from the Shorish, the same Shorish as Lamma Teni Un. Right. But Hayuj would not say that. Right. But here That's you see point. once again that Menachem was m much, it was. Open minded. <laughs> I don't know. Menachem could easily, you know, jump to from one to another because he didn't saw teniun, so nun aleph. The, the yud is irrelevant, uh, for example. But, the, but I'm saying the meaning is totally different. Yeah, the meaning change changes. Yeah, that's that's the implications. It 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 um, it can, could mean a lot. Yeah, it could make a whole different different story altogether. So. Um, I'm just going to to take to refer to what you were saying. You were asking why did Radak Sefer Shorashim is much more um, accepted. accepted than than Ibn Janakh's Sefer Shorashim. The same based on Ibn Janakh. Yeah, anyway. directly. So also it has the same. It called it the same name in Arabic. Sefer uh, Ibn Janakh is called uh, Kitab al Usul which means Sefer Shorashim, and that's how he called it. So in the introduction, Radak explicitly says that, he says, okay, let me take one more sentence, Gershutchem, it's okay. Um, it's, it's a very fascinating comparison I, 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 I like to, uh, to make. Um, two different sentences, from one from Ibn Janakh and one from Radak, just to show you how different they were. So Radak says in, the, in his introduction to his grammar book, he says, um, one must learn grammar, of course, it's very important. You have to know how to read and how to write also. But if you invest all your time in it, it won't, it won't be over because there are so many books and there are so many other things you have to do. You have to learn Torah and mitzvahs and Musa, etc. So what I did, I collected all the important things in Derech Ktsara so that you can learn it easily and in Derech Ktsara and you'll have all uh, all, all you need, like user-friendly. That's what he's saying. Ibn Janakh says something completely different. He says, um, in one place in Sefer Adikduk, he says, he's like referring to the reader, he says, you know that I invested the whole of my life to grammar. I'm, I'm learning it day and night. I've, uh, I've bought I've, I've uh, taken out more money to Shemen Lamao in order to, to keep awake at night to learn this than some other guy uh, expanded expand, to, to wine. He probably means Shmuel and Agil. They were really, they were rivals. Um, that's another story. And, and he's saying, I was studying it, he says, I was prophesizing with this wisdom. So he spends day and night, and this this is all what he does, and he's prophet that, that level that he, he get prophesized from it. So that's a really interesting comparison between how they took it. So, but what happens that Radak says that he is going after his um, um, he's basing his books. Um, mainly upon Chayuj and Ibn Janakh's words. And you're asking why is it more acceptable? I think there are um, two, uh, two answers to that. The first one is, um, um, is that um, Radak wrote in Hebrew and Ibn Janakh and Chayuj wrote in Arabic, which limited, which was, you know, um, um, not, not all Jews could 
could read Arabic, and that, that affected. It was more widespread. And the second one, I think, um, why Radak actually by himself is more known and acceptable than Ibn Janakh. Many people haven't <coughs> heard of Ibn Janakh, even though even though he's mentioned by all of the Rishonim. Rambam mentions it. By the way, Rambam not only mentions him in the More, but also in his medical um, writings, because Ibn Janakh was a doctor, was a, a pharma, far, farm, uh, pharmacist. pharmacist, yeah. He wrote a very important book in, in, in pharmacology, he just discovered several years ago, the first time. Never mind that. So, um, um, so, Rada, so, Radak was much is much more known than Ibn Janakh. I think another answer to that because Radak. Oh, is that why he called the Sefer Harikma? Oh no, never mind. I'm thinking of I'm, no. I'm using the wrong word. That's what. Okay. That's a translation, no. medieval okay. translation. Okay. It's called Kitab al Luma. Okay. But um, Radak, if you ask people, where they, do they know Radak from? They won't say, oh, from uh, his grammar book, of course, or from his dictionary. No, they know him from the commentary on the on the Bible. He has almost full commentary on all the Bible. So people uh, read commentary much more than grammar, right? Obviously. So I think that's what um, he's more known for. And Ibn Janakh didn't do that. He didn't write, um, is it running commentary? Uh, yeah, right. Running commentary on the Bible. So that uh, that's why he's much less known. Um, but that should be changed. Um, I'm working on it. Um, hopefully, yeah. So, just for conclusion, what I do is now um, I currently um, translate some of his earlier books. I I want to translate them all. Um, but what's interesting that some of uh, most of his earlier um, writings were never translated into Hebrew, which is quite astonishing because everybody knows he's the greatest one. So. Just recently, I was I published one. One was published, and there are more on the way. Hopefully, um, you'll all gonna hear about it <laughs> soon. Yeah, you want. Oh. Okay, thank you. For